G'day guys and welcome back to another video on the Druzy channel. Nine things we learned from opening round. Nine things is back on the Druzy channel. Let's go. After a year off traveling Europe, I am back to summarize the week of footy every week throughout footy season for you. This year's gonna be absolutely massive and I'll want as many people along for the ride as possible. I'm trying to hit 9,000 subscribers right now. So if you're new to the channel and want some fresh, new, exciting footy content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And by leaving a like on the video, it massively supports the channel. Let's get straight into it. Nine things we learned from opening round. Number one. Grundy wasn't the problem. The Grundy and Gorn dynamic didn't quite work in Melbourne. They tried to play Grundy as a forward and just the mix and the game time in the ruck, it just didn't work out for whatever reason at Melbourne. Grundy goes up against his former side in opening round and for me, Brody Grundy was the best on ground. His physicality against Gorn for four quarters I thought really wore Gorn down and I know it was a team effort from Sydney. But even if Gorn was going to get a mark, Grundy would just hack him down, push him in the back, just make him earn every single possession that he got. And by the third and fourth quarter, Gorn was absolutely cooked. It was Grundy's first game for the Swans, but he looked really connected with those mids. Heaney, uh, Warner, both having really good games. And as I said, Brood Grundy was the best player on ground for me. And it showed that it wasn't him that was the problem at Melbourne. They just couldn't quite get it right with him. He looked like an absolute star and back to his best. Number two. The pressure piles on the Ds. I don't want to get too dramatic just yet with Melbourne because Sydney away is a very tough fixture and I think Sydney will probably be a top four side this year. This game was really, really tight. The first half was just a contested war and Melbourne just lacked polish on the outside. Petrarca and Clayton Oliver and Jack Viney, they all had good games and got to work. But as soon as the ball got to the outside or they were moving the ball out of defensive 50, it just wasn't polished. It wasn't clean from the Ds. Then in the fourth quarter, they just start to get dominated out of the middle, which is their bread and butter. It's their own game. You expect guys like Petrarca, Viney, Clayton Oliver to hold that down, but they just got exposed in the last quarter. And in the first sort of five, six minutes of the fourth quarter, Sydney come out, blitz them, and pretty much end the game there. But with all the off-field stuff that Melbourne have had in this off-season, then you have Jake Bowie get injured, and then Grundy goes and has a best on-ground performance. There's just a lot of negative tone around the Ds at the moment. And I feel like this premiership window is only going to be open for so long. The last three games that they've lost have been by such fine margins, but they do begin to add up. One massive positive from this game, though, is Caleb Windsor. He looks like a ready-made AFL player. Didn't look out of place at all. So that is one positive to take away from the Ds. But the negative tone is starting to pile up on the Ds and the pressure will build. So need to get a win next week against the Dogs. Number three. The Blues mean business in 2024. I'd written off the Blues in the second quarter, as I think most people would. They were down by 46 points. My auntie Heather in the other room flicked over to Channel 72 to watch Escape to the Country, and she didn't realize until after the game that Colton won. It was a mammoth comeback, and I don't blame her. I thought the game was done. Brisbane looked really good. They set up really well defensively in that first half, and I don't know what it was about Colton, whether they just came out a bit nervous, a bit jittery. I found that a lot of their mids just sort of kept running into each other, going for the same ball, and they weren't quite clean. But as the game went on, they just started to get on top. You could see as soon as the second goal went in, they were just winning the contested ball. They were winning the ground ball. They started to be clean with it. Um, but even going into half time, I did not think the Blues had a chance. Then in the second half, it all clicked. The mids got to work, started winning the clearance. Chera and Cripps were absolutely massive. And then Kerno just started cooking, doing what he does as one of the best players in the league in that forward line, kicking four goals. But this is a massive credit to the coaches and the character of the Blues this win. In the first half, they couldn't even get the ball past the center line. And then in the second half, they started to take the game on. They started to take on those risky kicks and it paid off for them massively. So massive credit to the Colton coaches to be able to switch it up in game. This win shows character, it shows fight, it shows hunger. Shows optimism, all the good things that you need for a genuine premiership contender. Well done, Blues. This was a massive win. Number four, Harry Mackay delivered when it mattered most. For all the talk that's happened with Harry Mackay in the past few years, what a performance it was from him. To kick three goals and the go-ahead goal that gave Colton the win in the end was absolutely huge from a man who's been under so much pressure at this club. Not only did he kick three goals and the one that mattered most, I loved his ruck game in that third quarter in particular. When the Blues got going... Harry Mackay had some really important clearances, and I think that ruck duo with De Koning works really well. That was the story of the game for me. Harry Mackay stood up when it mattered most. Absolutely massive for his confidence. Number five, Gold Coast have no more excuses. What a win by the Gold Coast Suns. That first half was an absolute clinic. That midfield 
is absolutely beautiful. Raul was best on ground for me, but it was a collective effort in the midfield. Pau, Fiorini, Flanders, Anderson, and Tuk Miller, they all absolutely balled out today. With Wits hitting it down to them, he had a great game as well. It was just a great collective effort across the field. Ben King in the forward line. He looks like a genuine top-tier key forward now. He had a day out. Lukosius looked good. Ainsworth, uh, Holman. As I said, collective effort across the field. I can't name every single player, but they've got Damien Hardwick now. Their forward line's potent. Their midfield strong. Their backs are solid. There's no more excuses for the Suns. What an absolutely outstanding win it was today. Loved how they went about it. Loved how they used the ball. Made the ground big. Massive win for the Suns. Number six. Richmond bottom four predictions warranted. Firstly, Gold Coast played well. Full credit to them. But Richmond just looked like a bottom four side against the Suns. I know it's only the first game of the season, but to kick two goals in one half against Gold Coast isn't good enough. Their midfield, I don't really like. They've got the names in there, but they just don't quite gel yet. And their forward line just had no identity today without Lynch. Obviously, Rewalt's retired. They just had nothing, nothing that excited me going forward at all. And then down back, they still have a lot of players from that premiership era. They've got Grimes and Floston and Broad, guys like that. But they're playing in a new system now. And those roles that they played in those premiership years have changed. It's a new system, a new way of playing. So they didn't look as effective and they just look a bit behind the pace, a little bit slower than they did when they were so effective in those premiership years. I like the Tigers and I don't want to write them off, but a lot of people predicted them to slide. I predicted them to finish in the bottom three and a performance like that warranted that today. So Richmond, they need a lift. Good third quarter, but massively disappointing result. Number seven, the Orange team are as good as ever. GWS need to calm down. That win against Collingwood was absolutely bananas. They just didn't stop. They were bloody relentless. The orange tsunami or whatever the bloody <laughs> saying goes. They were incredible today. Callum Brown up forward looks like a prime Matthew Pavlich. That was an incredible display. Every time the ball went near him, it just looked like he was going to kick a goal. Kicked one from 55. Kicked one from bloody an angle on the boundary that just absolutely sailed through. They have unearthed an absolute gem in Brown. Where has he come from? He's class. I can't, I can't, I'm speechless for the performance that I just saw from him. Then some baby-faced kids come in and do a great job as well, which just shows that the system works. And then Stephen Cornelio... Providing that run and that handball game through the corridor was absolutely outstanding. Solid down back. The Giants look good. There's a big, big chance that they're going to be playing in the last game in September. That was such an impressive performance. It was good to see Cadman kick a few goals and take some good contested marks as well. We want to see the young fella come on. Jesse Hogan looked great as well. So all positive for GWS. Massive win against the reigning premiers. Number eight. Collingwood didn't look themselves. I think a part of this was they missed crucial shots at crucial times in the game. Lockie Schultz and Jamie Elliott in the third quarter when it seemed like Collingwood were going to start to build some momentum. Missed set shots, which you'd expect them to make. But with the relentlessness that the Giants came with, I feel like Collingwood just didn't get a chance to sort of settle. And when the camera panned to Craig McRae on the bench, he almost looked shocked. Same as Maynard. He did not look himself today. I'm not saying Collingwood had an absolutely terrible game and... The Dacos brothers did a lot of good things today, as they always do. They still kicked a high score against a really good side, but they just didn't look themselves today, Collingwood. Let's just chalk it off as a blip on the radar. I'm sure they'll bounce back and be a great side this year, but just didn't have that same, I don't know, hunt and desire to win that they had in, uh, in 2023. But that'll come for sure, and GWS played a great game. And number nine... Druzy is back and better than ever. Right, don't click off the video because I have an announcement to make. I know you're probably going to click off because it's not about footy, but listen here. Your support this year will mean absolutely everything to me because I am about to make a big move. As of round two, I will be living in Melbourne. I'm making the move. I'm chasing my career in YouTube and as a strength and conditioning coach as well. So I've decided to pick up my things in Perth, move over to Melbourne and chase my dream to work in the footy industry. So I'm back from traveling. I didn't forget about the channel and this year it's going to be bigger and better than ever with more collabs, better quality content, just bigger and better things are coming all around. So if you support the channel and you like what I do, your support this year will mean more than ever. So simply leaving a like does wonders. Subscribing if you're new, you'll see more exciting content and all you're doing is helping me support my dream, which I'm chasing 
very soon. I'm going to be living in Melbourne. It's going to be massive. So get on board in 2024. And I appreciate you watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And we will see you for more videos very, very soon. I'll see you in the next video. You take care. You plonkers.